Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Cryptic. Now, what I'm going to look at today is a question that we sometimes get, which is, aren't some of the words in crosswords just too hard for me to know? And it's not a simple answer. There are, there are some words in crosswords that not everybody's familiar with, and sometimes that certainly slows down solving them. But it doesn't have to bring a complete stop to it. And the main reason for that is that, as we've seen, cryptic clues have a very particular feature that they give you two ways to get to the solution. The first way is the definition at one end of the clue or the other. And the other is the word play, be it another definition or some form of jumbling with letters or taking something away or adding something to something else. And the great thing is that you can actually learn words from crosswords from those clues and the definitions and the letters that you already have in the grid. Now we've talked quite a lot about how to get started, how to find a clue that leads you to the beginning in a crossword. But what I thought we'd look at today is how to finish off, or rather how to fill in the words that you're not quite sure are words, but you can be actually brought to some confidence by the word, wording of the clue. So what I've got is a grid with some of the answers not filled in. And let's just have a look at these clues and see if they can just lead us to where we need to be. So four down here. The clue is sources in Kyoto archive teaching ancient Japanese exercises. Sorry, I didn't read that very well. Sources in Kyoto archive teaching ancient Japanese exercises. Now the surface of the clue is about some sort of Kyoto library and what it's teaching. But Sources is a very meaningful word in a crossword clue and will very often mean the beginnings of something. So let's see how far we can get into the clue looking at the beginnings of words that are, we're asked to look at the sources of. Sources in Kyoto, K, archive, A, teaching, T, and that would still fit in the space, ancient, A, and that would give us kata. Now, I'm not going to say that I knew the word kata before I looked at this clue, but there's certainly a possibility that it could mean Japanese exercises. Now, be that some sort of tai chi or writing exercises, I have a feeling that katagari or something like that, katakana, I think that might be Japanese writing, but I didn't need to know that. I could be very confident that sources in Kyoto Archive Teaching Ancient. In some ways, what else could those words be doing in the clue? But I can be very confident that those letters must mean Japanese exercises. And I can enter kata with a degree of confidence there. Even though I couldn't have said to you what, what kata meant if you'd come and ask me. But... I'm still very confident that that is the answer, and I've learned something. It's some form of Japanese exercises. I don't know what sort, but it's something. Now, moving on to six down. S something, S something, A something, something in the grid. And we could start forming some guesses as to what might fit into that space at the moment. But let's have a look at the clue. Parades for which packs called out. Now, called out there is suggesting the sort of homophone thing that you get from did you say or we hear and so i'm wondering if the whole answer can be a word meaning parades and can sound like a word meaning packs and the word that comes to mind is sachets now that's a word that i would associate with dance i often hear it in cricket commentaries where a player a batsman sachets down the pitch to hit the ball. Can it mean parades? I wouldn't have known for sure, but the fact that it fits the answer so clearly and that it sounds like the word sachets, as in a pack of sugar or something like that, 
suggest to me very strongly that sachets can be parades and I'm confident enough again to fill it in. It's got a meaning similar to what I thought sachet meant. A word that's often mispronounced chassis, weirdly, but uh, I think that's something else. That's the body of a car. Anyway, confident about that, and that helps us move on to 16 across. S blank R blank I. Again, not very many. Obviously, English words will fit that pattern. And the clue says, section of Burmese railway that serves drinks in the east. Now, again, section of is a very descriptive crossword term. And I think there is a degree to which the harder the word is to fit into a normal vocabulary, the easier they make the clue sometimes. And here, section of is strongly suggesting, suggesting to me that the answer will be hidden in the words following section of. And there in Burmese railway, we see the letters S-E-R-A-I in order, which will fit perfectly. Again, we don't, you know, you may know the word Sarai, which I've sort of heard of as a caravan stop, as in a caravan of camels. So it presumably can be some sort of establishment that serves drinks in the East. But again, I couldn't have said exactly what meanings were covered by Sarai, but it's so clearly in the middle of Burmese railway that again, I've learned something there. Move down to 23 down. And um, the clue is poet left by killer. Now, left looks like the letter L that we've got at the beginning of that. So we need to find a killer that would be blank R blank A and for the whole answer to be a poet. Now, that's not simple. Um, and you, it's possible that some people, especially children, might not know either part. But if you eventually hit on the idea of a killer being not a human killer, but a killer whale in this case. It's Latin name. In fact, the name by which they're known more often these days is, is Orca. And following L, that gives us Lorca. Now, again, there's a poet. He's a Roman poet, I think, very much on the edge of my knowledge. Not, not one of the Roman poets I'd have listed if you asked me to list a few Roman poets. But a good crossword entry fits the letters we had perfectly, answers the clue. Again, we've got something there that we didn't necessarily know beforehand, but it was certainly possible. I'm going to try 13 down. Vermin on platter chewed banger. Now, we've got quite a lot of different letters here. And vermin. Vermin something like a mouse or a rat. And platter chewed, platter chewed, chewed looks like one of those anagram indicators. So if we chew up the letters of platter, we'd have three others left in our 10 letters. So rat is looking favorite and we'll fit at the top of this. And a little bit of thought might lead us to a word meaning a banger, not as, not as in a sausage as the clue suggests, but a different form of banger. And in this case, that would be a car that was a bit clapped out and there's an old word for those that is rattle trap and again you might not have known that before tackling this clue but it's fairly clearly guided by the clue and it feels like the right sort of meaning even if you didn't know it so something learnt for some people again now we've got two remaining here and you'll have guessed that the reason that i left these words unsolved um, was because I think all of the other words that were in the grid before we began were words that most people could be expected to know, at least at some level. You know, I think you'll struggle, maybe Reichstag at nine across and Ankara at 11 across require some general knowledge, but not quite as much as some of these that we've been tackling now. So have another look at two, we'll have a look at two down. Runs from Jester producing a cry. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, runs from suggests taking the R from something. Runs is one of those standard crossword abbreviations, as in the cricket abbreviation R is for runs. And if you take R from something, what, what sort of jester could fit that? Well, you're going to need some general knowledge here, but one of the most famous jesters um, in literature is a jester who doesn't actually appear alive at all in the play that he's from. But 
Hamlet's famous Alas Poor Yorick speech is about the skull of his dead court jester. And if you either knew that, or you knew the fox hunting cry yoik or yoiks, you'd be able to see that one would lead to the other. Now again, you might not know that Yorick was a jester, and you might not know that yoik is a, is a cry of the field, but the one confirms the other, and even without both bits of knowledge, you might be able to complete that clue. Certainly the Y blank I blank K formula was very suggestive. And then finally, three down, weak peacemakers, just not liberal. Now, it helps that I've seen enough crosswords to know that peacemakers are often the UN. So this almost certainly begins UN. And now there's not many words that will fit. UN, H, something, R, something, Y. And the whole clue now looks like it, the whole definition looks like it will be weak. Um, I must say, that's not a word that I would expect to know. It looks to me like just, not liberal. Liberal can be the letter L. So a word meaning just that you can take liberal out of and still fear would be hardly. You take out the L and you have hardy. And that makes the whole word unhardy. Again, not a very familiar word, but something that I think has just been proved by the clue. Presumably it would mean weak because somebody who is unhardy wouldn't be able to survive for very long. And I think what this exercise has demonstrated, and, and as I've repeated a few times, you can learn from what you've done. And the letters in the grid especially help guide you to solutions that you might not quite have known, definitions that you might not quite have appreciated before. And you can actually learn just from the clue what something means. It's a helpful. Um, end the puzzle and nice for once to actually be finishing a puzzle together. So thanks very much. I hope you'll join us next time.